including the National Assembly Chamber. A firm commitment was therefore made by Parliament's executive authority, which comprises of Nosivir Mapisa Ngakula, who is, of course, the Speaker of the National Assembly and, of course, the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, Ndade Amos Masondo, to ensure that the work of Parliament continues uninterrupted. And in the current context, that is really about making sure that the most appropriate platform is created to enable the State President to deliver his annual State of the Nation address and to announce the government's program of action for the year 2022 going into 2023. Viewers might also remember that the State of the Nation address um, date has already been announced. This year the State of the Nation address will be taking place on the 10th of February at 7 p.m. in the evening. Another important point that our viewers might not be aware of is that once the handover has been completed, the space behind us, the City Hall, will be declared the National Parliament of South Africa precinct. And that is, of course, in line with Section 2 of the Powers and Privileges Act, which clearly stipulates that if any one of the two houses of Parliament or its committees convenes their meetings outside of Parliament, that that space can be rededicated to enable the work of Parliament to continue. And, of course, that space will be assumed to be the precinct, the seat of Parliament. And, of course, for all of those who want to join us, if you're unable to join us via our DSTV 408 channel, you can also follow the proceedings of the handover on all our social media platforms. Do stay tuned. now at half past nine. Uh, what's the time now? Thank you. You were beautiful. Um, viewers, as you can see, the procession is beginning to arrive. Um, we have, of course, the mayor of the city of Cape Town, who's part of the delegation. Um, we also have the speaker of the National, uh, of the National Assembly, Meno Siviwe Mapisa uh, Makula, who is also um, joining the procession. We, are about to we also begin. have the chairperson of the National this Council very of, of Provinces, Ndate Amos Masondo, who um, is also part of the delegation. And we have um, the deputy speaker of the National Assembly, who is also Am part I of the procession. They are now making okay. their way into their designated seats uh, for the, the official handover officers to start. and the executive mayor will take their seat. They will be coming down very soon. Thank you very much. Uh, please remain standing for the arrival of uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, the Executive Mayor of the City of Cape Town. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, esteemed guests, um, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Mayor Nosibuya Mapisa Ngakula, the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, Ndate Emus Masondo, the Executive Mayor of the City of Cape Town, Alderman Gordon Hill Lewis. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, I, was, I must also indicate that uh, the, we also have uh, in attendance, and we thank you for your presence, the Minister of Police, 
Ndati Bekikele, the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Ndati Lechesa Zenori, the member of the City of Cape Town, Mayoral Committee, Ndati James Foss, you are welcome. Uh, also the executive management and the staff uh, of parliament and also of the city of Cape Town. The program, ladies and gentlemen, is not long. Uh, it's a very short one. Uh, the first we'll have, I'm going to call, not now, uh, the executive mayor uh, of the city of Cape Town and uh, he, will, he will make his remarks and they will be followed by the Speaker of the National Assembly. And thereafter, uh, there will be a symbolic handover uh, of uh, the key for this hall. As you will know, the reason for our gathering here is the official handover of the City Hall to the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa that is represented by the two presiding officers and after which it will be regarded or referred to as the precincts of Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. So once the key is handed over and the, the mayor will speak to the historical significance of the key, I understand that there is quite a huge history behind this key. So the mayor will make reference to it. I don't want to speak about it. I know it. I know the information, but I don't want to steal your thunder, uh, uh, mayor. So you will speak to it <laughs> as you hand it over to the presiding officers. Then there will be the signing that will take place here uh, by both the presiding officers as well as uh, the mayor of the city of Cape Town. Then we will allow a few questions and answers, I think for a few minutes, and then uh, thereafter we'll conclude with a photo opportunity with the uh, the, the presiding officers and the mayor, as well as uh, the, uh, some of the guests, will be invited to go up uh, this balcony uh, so that they can have a, a nice historical picture there of this important day. So with, without uh, further ado, can I, it's my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to invite uh, to the podium to address us and to address the nation on this uh, special occasion, the executive mayor of the city of Cape Town, Alderman Jordan K. Lewis. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Maloto. Madam Speaker, Mapisa Ngakula, Mr. Chairman, former Mayor as well, Chairman Masondo, our Deputy Speaker, who for the last 11 years has called me Gigi Louie, and I've never once corrected him because I know that it is a term of endearment. It's lovely to see you again, Mr. Tsunode. Our ministers and uh, council colleagues, Elderman, our officials, our uniform chiefs, both from Metro Police and from SAPS, and members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, you are truly welcome here today at, at Cape Town City Hall. Uh, and what an honor it is for us today to be able to hand over this magnificent building, newly renovated and restored to all of its glory, to uh, the Speaker of Parliament for the conducting of the State of the Nation Address next week. In a time of national tragedy, we felt that it was important for all South Africans to come together and to put aside whatever differences of politics and news and the debate topics of the day and to help one another to get, to get through that time of tragedy and to show that first and foremost, we are South African. We love this country, we are passionate about its success, and we love our parliament, and we want our parliament to succeed. And all of us here in Cape Town, and I know that all of us in South Africa, shared in the extreme pain and sadness watching those buildings burn on that early January morning. 
And it seemed an absolutely obvious step to us that in that time, we should come forward and offer what little help we can offer to make Parliament succeed and to ensure that its business can continue, come what may. Not as Capetonians, not as separate spheres of government, without any regard for the distinction between the executive and the legislature and the local government and so on, but because, Madam Speaker, we are South Africans. And this is first and foremost a South African tragedy and requires a united national response. So it seemed obvious to us that we should offer our facilities, and it was wonderful to hear that Parliament readily accepted that offer with an attitude of graciousness. Since then, the discussions about the handover have gone exceedingly well. And thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for the work that your team has done. And thank you very much to my city colleagues. I tell you, Madam Speaker, after that first day, I haven't had much involvement. But there have been a team of people from your office and from my office who have worked nearly day and night to get this facility ready to make sure it is exactly as you need it for the state of the nation. And little did I know at the time, little did I know at the time, but of course it became obvious shortly after, that the State of the Nation would be held on the 10th of February, and of course the 11th of February is the anniversary of this building's, possibly its most famous moment, where Nelson Mandela Madiba addressed the nation and the world for the very first time as a free man on the 11th of February, 1990. And that day, when he addressed the, the world from the balcony just behind us, where we will go shortly together, Madam Speaker, that day represented so much hope and optimism for our country. It represented the defeat of something old and unjust, and the ushering in of something new and hopeful and uniting and peaceful and free and tolerant. And I hope that in this tragedy that we've all just gone through with the loss of our parliamentary buildings, that this state of the nation, the very first state of the nation ever to take place outside of the parliamentary, what we know as the parliamentary buildings, the very first one to ever take place outside of those buildings. We hope that it is also an opportunity for our country to come back full circle to that moment on the 11th of February 1990, to give to the country and the world a renewed sense of vision, of hopefulness, of unity, of coming together, of peace and care, and freedom and tolerance for our country and for the world. And we must, we must accept that as we prepare for the state of the nation, that is not necessarily the feeling of the country at the moment. And I think particularly about the extraordinary intolerance, the intolerance that is currently being shown to those who have come to South Africa, sometimes walking thousands of kilometers, fleeing war and terror and famine and poverty, coming here looking for a better life. And I hope that in this time we can say to all of those immigrants to South Africa who have come here for a better life, that you should never, ever feel afraid in this country. You should never have to apologize for who you are or where you come from in South Africa. The hopefulness and tolerance and commitment to peace that President Mandela spoke of on this balcony in 1990 is hopefully renewed and restored on the 10th of February 2022 as this site once again hosts the state of the, or for the first time, hosts the State of the Nation Address. Now, Madam Speaker, I must tell you something about uh, the key that we're about to give you. The building that we're handing over today was inaugurated 
in July 1905, the year of our Lord, 1905, a long time ago. And uh, it's a magnificent building. But of course, over the years, it's undergone some renovations and upgrades, and the doors and locks have been changed. And, and so it was thought for a time that we could not find the original magnificent gilded key that was the original key to this city hall, to the doors that we just came through. But our, uh, our city has fortunately preserved some of these wonderful ar artifacts. And here, Madam Speaker, we have the original key that was cast for these main doors of City Hall, which has been kept in safe storage for more than a hundred, well, 117 years. And our uh, city archivist went and got that key out of storage. And it's our absolute pleasure to do the symbolic handover today with that original key. We'll do it in a, in a minute or two. With that original key uh, for the use of Parliament for the next week and a half. <laughs> our only request is that, as with the Mace of Parliament, it be kept in the utmost security uh, and safety so that it can be returned to safe storage after the state of the nation and the debate is complete. But it is a very, very historic Cape Town artifact. And it is, once again, rep reminiscent of the fact that when this building was opened, only certain residents of Cape Town were allowed inside here, Madam Speaker. That, that door was not open to all. But now it is open to all. As our society is open to all in this constitutional democracy. And so we look with great excitement and anticipation to the State of the Nation next week. And I wish to say that after this handover is complete, this is no longer Cape Town City Hall, ladies and gentlemen. After this handover is complete, the building behind us is the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. This building undergoes a transfiguration. Those Anglicans amongst us will know what I'm referring to. This building will go, undergo a transfiguration and it will become our nation's parliament. And it is a very, very proud moment for us to be able to host our nation's parliament in this magnificent building. I wish you all the best with it, Mr. Chairperson and, and Madam Speaker. I look forward to attending the State of the Nation next week, and I hope that this will be a landmark State of the Nation that brings our country together and shows us, restores the promise of hope and peace and freedom and tolerance that was first laid out for us when there were 80,000 to 100,000 people on this grand parade listening to the President deliver that speech on the 11th of February 1990. So bless you as you do your final preparations for the State of the Nation next week. Uh, and it is our absolute pleasure to be able to, to hand over this building to you. And we pledge our full support and any other assistance that you need to make sure that Parliament succeeds, not just next week, but over the coming months and years as you undertake your reconstruction project. And I hope that you will build the most impressive, ambitious, exciting, and inclusive parliament that South Africa and Africa has ever seen. So we stand behind you as Cape Town and as South Africans. Thank you very, very much, Maloto. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Alderman Hill Lewis. I'm sure you realize that I really enjoy calling you that. <laughs> because for many years in Parliament, we called you Honorable Member of Parliament. Today, it's a different story. Thank you very much for your remarks. Eh? Ladies and gentlemen, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Mapisa Nagula.
Thank you very much, uh, um, Program Director, Mr. Mutapo, Your Worship, the Mayor of the City of Cape Town, Gordon Hill Lewis, Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, Honorable Amos Masondo, the Minister of Police, Honorable Peki Tele, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Lichisa Zinodi, the executive staff of both Parliament and the city, Parliament led by Madam Kiawa, members of the media, and invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today marks four weeks since South Africans woke up on the morning of the 2nd of January 2022 to the devastating news of the fire that engulfed certain parts of the building of parliament, causing extensive damage to several meeting rooms, offices of members of parliament, and building contents. Now, one of the greatest losses in this disastrous incident was the complete destruction of the National Assembly Chamber an assembly which hosts sittings of one of the houses of parliament and joint sittings of parliament, which include the annual State of the Nation address by the President of the Republic of South Africa. This was not just a mere building of brick and mortar that was destroyed. It was a distinguished national heritage which represented rich political history of South Africa, which connected our past, our present, and desired future for a truly united, non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous free South Africa. But despite this devastation, pain, and disappointment, we will rise again. We will rise from these ashes as we did in the aftermath of the struggle against apartheid. We will rebuild, we will recover, we will win. South Africans are a resilient and tenacious people. We've gone through the most difficult and devastating phases in our history, and we are certain that we will triumph over this one. The concept of cooperative governance which was one of the cornerstones of our constitutional democracy and which enjoins the three spheres of government to function cooperatively and support each other in their service to the people is one of the constitutional mandates of parliament. The fact that we are here today on this historic occasion of the handover of the Cape Town City Hall is a testament to the dynamism and vibrancy of our constitution in so far as its foresight and safeguards are concerned. Equally significant and important, it is the matured leadership, and I want to emphasize this, the matured leadership, unity of purpose and decisiveness displayed by leaders here in making required and necessary interventions to provide solution in times of need. In this regard, we once again extend our deepest gratitude to the executive mayor of the city, your worship, Hill Lewis, for your leadership and solution-oriented intervention in providing this historic hall for the hosting of the joint sittings of parliament which will kick off with the State of the Nation addressed by the President of the Republic of South Africa, debates on the addresses by members of parliament, and of course the reply by the President. We also thank many South Africans who have come forward to, for, to, to offer accommodation to host not only the sitting of the SONA, but office accommodation and other assistance to parliament. We have found the city hall to be the most suitable facility. 
meeting all the parliamentary requirements regarding infrastructure and capacity. It was also an affordable option as the mayor has promised us that no assent would be paid by parliament to conduct its business. I think that is the most important thing because we have very little to spend to make sure that we provide facilities which will be required by members of parliament during this period. Like the National Assembly Chamber, this hall has rich history, a history that links our past colonial apartheid era and our present democratic dispensation. The hall which was built in the early 900s and has for years served as one of the colonial symbols of the Cape Colony has now become our proud heritage and a symbol of our collective hopes, aspiration, and freedom. It is a historic landmark of our journey as a people towards a democratic transition and a free society. And indeed, one of the critical milestones of Madiba's long walk to freedom. We have thus come a full cycle. 32 years since our historical occasion on the 11th of February 1990, when he stood by the side of Mandela, President Mandela, the current president, Sil Ramaphosa, will now address the nation from this very city hall on the 10th of February 2022. Mayor, you will recall that because of that past, that history, brutal history we come from, that some of the people who are sitting here today watched that event, that occasion of the 11th of February from many, many countries in the world, in the continent, where people were refugees. And of course, there were those who were watching that event on television from their prison cells. So for us today, indeed, this South Africa belongs to all who live in it. So if you are in the Free State, you are in Gauteng, you are in Cape Town in the Western Cape, it is South Africa and it belongs to all of us. It belongs to all who live in it. I thank you for that. Now, today as the mayor officially hands over this historic site, it will officially become the precinct of Parliament of the Republic of South Africa until the 17th of February. It will be the first time in the history of our, of our constitutional democracy that the state of the nation takes place outside the regular precincts of parliament in Cape Town. I want to thank you, Minister Bekitele, and your generals for being here this morning. Because as the mayor hands over this city hall to us today, we know that from now onwards, you have a task of ensuring that this parliament of the people, which is here on the Grain Parade, is well looked after, is well safeguarded. Over the weekend, uh, Minister, Mayor, we saw what happened to a city hall in an area called, the city called Komani now which was engulfed by fire and went up in flames. We, I don't, know why, I don't know how to express this, but we have all the confidence in the abilities of our police service that you will make sure that nothing and nothing of that sort will happen. I'm not giving people ideas, but what we saw over the weekend was heartbreaking heartbreaking in the same way that we were deeply hurt and saddened by what happened to Palam and traumatized, we should say this, to what happened on the 2nd of January to our national parliament. Therefore, honorable members, therefore, ladies and gentlemen of the media, 
all the appropriate rules and laws will therefore apply to this venue as they would at the constitutionally designated seat of parliament in Parliament Street. As of today, and until the 7th of February, 17th of February, this majestic hall will fall under the control of parliament as per the definition of the precincts of parliament provided for in the section two of the powers, privileges, and immunities of parliament and provincial legislatures act. The act amongst others defines the precinct of parliament as any area of land every building or part of a building used for parliament's business and in connection with the proceedings of parliament under parliament's control. Section two of the same act stipulates that where a house or committee convenes beyond the seat of parliament, this act applies as if the premises were the house or committee in city were within the precinct of parliament. In terms of this act, section three, the precinct's control rests with the speaker of the National Assembly and the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. In this regard, your worship, the mayor, by handing over this hall to parliament, the mayor places it under the custodianship of both myself and the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces as per the laws of the Republic. The declaration of this hall as a precinct of parliament for the joint business of parliament must also comply with the joint rules of both houses. Joint rule eight explicitly states that joint sittings are held in the chamber of the assembly. In this regard, the speaker and the chairperson working jointly are empowered under the joint rules to frame a rule to remit unforeseen circumstances not provided for in the joint rules. The rule will therefore allow the state of the nation to be held outside of the chamber of the assembly. The rule will remain in force until a decision of the rules committee is made on such a rule. We must also state that preparations for the hosting of the state of the nation address at this venue are at an advanced stage. And indications are that South Africans should expect a successful address by the President of the Republic of our country. We will not divulge much at this moment regarding the ongoing preparatory work as a special media briefing on the state of the readiness will be conducted closer to the date of SONA. This is a historic moment. Despite the difficult circumstances which necessitated its occurrence, we are once again grateful to the mayor of the city of Cape Town for your intervention. Special gratitude also goes to all South Africans, as I've said, who have stood with us throughout the fire crisis, who have expressed support and encouragement during this difficult time. I want to take this opportunity to once more thank the firefighters of the city, the great men and women who, when really things were bad, when it was extremely hot, but they were in there selflessly and made sure that a bit could be rescued by us, those of us who are deployed to parliament. Investigations, of course, by the relevant authorities are underway, and assessments by experts to quantify the loss and damage are proceeding. And I want to thank the Honorable Minister De Lille, who and she and his team are hard at work to make sure that a quick assessment of the extent of the damage in Parliament is done. And hopefully, very soon, we will at least be allowed to go in and view for ourselves, just to see and satisfy ourselves that indeed what we have seen from the footage given to us by public works from their drone, that it is indeed a reality. We once again appeal 
impatient and anxious for answers as we all are, that we must afford the necessary space for those who are conducting the investigation and they will then report to all of us their outcomes. We therefore ask that we do not be drawn at this stage into any speculations or questions whose answers rely on these processes. As I have said, we are a resilient people of South Africa. We will rise again from the ashes of the devastating fire. We will rebuild. We will recover. We will win. And we will continue to be the rainbow nation which was declared by Madiba and Desmond Tutu in those days. I thank you, Your Worship. I thank the officials. I want to thank the officials of parliament and the officials of the city who have been hard, hard at work since the devastation of this fire. We can only stand here and proudly receive the key and the hall from the city, but the people behind all of that who do the work in, in the back, at the back, behind the scenes, it's you officials. General, we have all the confidence in our police to ensure that nothing and nothing happens to the city hall. I thank you all. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the media, and I want to repeat, uh, program director, that please, man, make sure that the ladies and gentlemen of the media do not ask us about things which have nothing to do with what we are here about. <laughs> and about things, I mean, people already believe that we know what has been destroyed inside the building and what has been rescued. I do want to say that. We have not had access to the actual building. But once that assessment is done by the engineers from the Department of Public Works, we will be able to have access. And I'm sure if the engineers agree, you will be able, as the media, to take a tour of of the, of the building and, and see for yourself the extent of the destruction. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Program Director. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you very much to the Executive Mayor for the remarks as well. Uh, I'm going to now move to the formalities of this handover. Uh, I'm going to kindly invite the Executive Mayor of the City of Cape Town to be the first to approach the table just uh, next to me so that uh, you can sign the certificate of handover and uh, thereafter you will be followed by the speaker as well as the chairperson. Take your seat, uh, Executive Mayor. Uh, there is a pen. I know that is a hot seat because of the sun. <laughs> because also of your attachment to this city. Today you are handing it over completely for the next couple of weeks. The mayor will also sign the copy that will be kept by the presiding officers of parliament.
Thank you very much, uh, Executive Mayor. You can kindly go back to your seat. Uh, yeah, after the, the signing. I also wish to invite the Speaker of the National Assembly. Yes, both the presiding officers will sign, uh, but uh, individually. <laughs> uh, that is individual responsibility and collective responsibility for the whole. <laughs> Madam Speaker, you are requested to take off your mask. Uh, the <laughs> 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 uh, don't be distracted, Honorable Speaker. <laughs> And also, our Honourable Speaker will sign the copy as well. That will remain with uh, the Executive Mayor of the City of Cape Town. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Yes. The pen and the table will be sanitized. Uh, before we call the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, and Tate Amos Masondo, please approach the desk to also endorse the receipt of the hall from the executive mayor of the city of Cape Town. Thank you very much. The chairperson will also sign the copy that will also remain with the executive mayor of the city of Cape Town. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Yes, the protocol officer will take the files away for safekeeping and for handover to the presiding officers later. Thank you very much for your million dollar signatures. I know the mayor cannot wait for a photo opportunity to hand over the historic key. Uh, he has been putting me under tremendous pressure to do so. <laughs> uh, it's now my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to invite the executive mayor of the city of Cape Town, Alderman Hill Lewis, to go just uh, by the, in front of the entrance of the hall. Uh, he's putting the, on the gloves because of the historic nature and uh, the priceless artifact uh, that is the key that was first handed over with the handing of the hall in 1905. Now the same key today will be handed over to the presiding officers of parliament yeah. I'm therefore going to also ask the Speaker of the National Assembly and the Chairperson of the NCOP to join the Mayor for the handover. <laughs> Can we shift the table? Thank you very much. Can you shift the table?
Okay, thank you very much. I'm now going to invite the executive mayor, uh, the speaker, as well as the chairperson to take their seats for a few questions, and thereafter we will then do conduct the photo opportunity on the balcony. Uh, do we have a roving mic for members of the media? Okay. Is there any question relating to the event? You will be the first. And then uh, who is the second hand? Just one round of question and answers. Is there any other hand? Okay. I see only, okay, there are two hands. And three hands, okay. That will be, tho uh, that will be those hands and then it will be done. Okay, go first. Hi, uh, this is Christian Duplessis from Netwerk Ferentona. This one is actually for Minister Tzeli um, on, um, sorry, uh, on, okay, so in comparison with the previous year's SONA's security measures, um, how will the security measures for this year compare to those? And can you elaborate on the security measures? Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Lindsay Denting for ENCA. Um, my question is also to the police minister. Uh, minister, given the remarks the speaker made um, about um, the city hall burning down in Kamani, do you feel that there's an orchestrated attack on some of South Africa's infrastructure, or are you viewing these as isolated incidents? Thank you. Um, my, my name is Bulilani Philip from SABC TV. Uh, my question is to the speaker. I know you've said in your speech that uh, the organization of SONA for this year is at an advanced stage. My question to you is that on a broad level, will the procession and the guard of honor that normally accompany the SONA be altered given that it's now a different venue? Thank you so much. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, members of the media. With regard to the last question, uh, Bulelani, uh, as the speaker said, uh, we have, uh, you know, it's a traditional thing that we have uh, the state of readiness media briefing that we normally conduct. Well, that's where all those questions will be uh, answered. So it's going to take place in a few days' time, and uh, I would appreciate if we can just uh, uh, wait for that moment because uh, the arrangements and uh, as well as all the preparations for the ceremonial nature and otherwise of the state of the nation address are busy underway and once we have concluded all the preparations will give you uh, uh, information that will cover all that uh, at appropriate time so that should be taking place in a week's time or so uh, bear with us the other questions uh, were directed to the minister of police uh, Honorable Minister, can I invite you to the podium? <laughs> if you so wish to deal with them. <laughs> Thank you for the ambush. Honorable Speaker, the Chair, the Executive Mayor, the question self-explained itself that I must come and explain on the security nitty-gritties. It can't be done. The preparations of the security here are with net joints, and uh, the net joints will come to explain on the last touches of the security here, but maybe mixing with the question that the Honorable Speaker raised that the head of the Protection Services, General Slapane, with her deputy, with his deputy here, I think General Butlow, they are here. They must make sure that 
the facility here is protected. And uh, the question, what happened in Gomani, we're not going to give an answer until we are informed by the investigations. Usually when you hear us talking from the police, we, we are informed by the investigations that are going on there. Surely we'll come back. Do we believe that is an orchestrated until, until investigation tells us so? Uh, we would stay with an understanding that there is a problem that is at the present moment uh, happen in Gomani, and we look at it in Gomani, and we will come back if there is any difference in the understanding of that one. Lastly, we will come back to let you know exactly how will be the security situation on that particular day. We might elaborate, but not as you wish, because that will stop being the security plan once we elaborate. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. I know that it was uh, an ambush. You were here, uh, as you are here as, an, uh, as a guest to observe this uh, important occasion. Uh, but thank you very much for the response. Um, I think without uh, any waste of time, this is the last item on the agenda, uh, on the program of today. I'm going to invite the executive mayor as well as the speaker and the chairperson uh, to be directed by the protocol officer up the stairs to the balcony where um, an official picture will be taken of uh, another official picture of the handover and I'm going to invite uh, the media cameras to shift to the street for a better angle of this uh, uh, important picture. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Once, uh, and then the, uh, later they will be joined for the photo opportunity by the Minister of Police, the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, and the Mayoral uh, Council member. Uh, thank you very much. May you kindly go up the stairs. And members of the media, if you can shift to the side of the street so that you can be able to capture. Thank you very much. And, and after the photo opportunity, we will be done. And uh, in this regard, I wish to thank you very much for your attendance and for your participation as well. Thank you very much, colleagues.
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good afternoon or rather good morning to our viewers at home. If you're just joining us, you're still watching Parliament TV. And of course, you would have witnessed this very historic um, handover of the city of uh, the Cape Town City Hall by our newly elected mayor um, of the city of Cape Town, Alderman uh, Jordan Lewis Hill. Um, mayor, talk to us about the symbolism of this handover. What does this mean, not only for you personally, but for the city, for the people of the city of Cape Town? Sure, so it's rich in symbolism and, uh, and meaning for our country. Firstly, we, we had the tragedy on the 2nd of January and we felt that uh, we, should, we should immediately come to the help of, of Parliament, not as a city but as South Africans, in a time of tragedy, everyone's got to help uh, and we've got to come together. So, so we thought that the, everyone must just try and do what they can and what we could do was offer our facilities so that Parliament could continue. So we made the offer of City Hall and the Civic Centre, which is just over there. And uh, Parliament came back to us to say that they would love to use the City Hall for the State of the Nation. Now that's, that's symbolic and meaningful because, of course, on the 11th of February 1990, uh, President Mandela spoke from the balcony just here behind us when he delivered his first speech as a free man. And it was on the 2nd of, November, uh, 2nd of, of February, yes, that, uh, that the announcement was made that he would be that he would be released. So it is a hugely symbolic moment and it really does feel like in this time of tragedy we have an opportunity to come back full circle all the way back to that historic day on the 11th of February when this grand parade behind us was filled with a hundred thousand people. The whole world was watching as this enormous moment of hope for our country and, and hopefully next week's speech can, can be can reignite some of that special feeling uh, in in South Africa because we, we we felt a bit worried as a country about what's happening but uh, hopefully we can help by coming together in this time of tragedy and reigniting that hope indeed so so with regards to the preparations that were made what kind of systems has the city put in place uh, just from a preparatory uh, perspective to ensure that today this event that we just witnessed now um, runs smoothly we have done everything that we possibly could. Firstly, the, the, the hall is just, the, the whole city hall has just been through a big restoration uh, project, a, a heritage project. So we had to still put the finishing touches on that. There were still some last minute things that had to be done. So we had to get that done very quickly. Of course, given the history here, we had to test all the fire systems 10 times over and make sure that they're all working perfectly, which they are all working perfectly. And, uh, and then just make sure that the, that the building is in tip-top, pristine condition for, for the use by Parliament. And then, of course, there were other things that we had to agree on, like all of these traders here that earn a living behind us. We had to make sure that they are properly accommodated and taken care of so that they don't lose any income. There's no disruption to them. So there were lots of little details. Of course, that was not done by me personally. That was done by a team in my office and in the speaker's office. So I'm very grateful. We've had a great working relationship. When we've, when we've got stuck on certain things, the speaker has just called me. We've sorted it out quickly. So it's gone well. Um, just in conclusion, very briefly, um, yeah. Executive Mayor, um, do you think that this in any way will position the city of Cape Town under your leadership nationally? Well, I just hope that it sends the message that b before any differences between us, we are South Africans. And we all have a vested interest in making this country work and succeed. And no one should ever celebrate a tragedy like what happened on the 2nd of January. Uh, it's a very sad day and we, we all need to help get through that, get our country back on track, get our parliament back on track and, and make our country win. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. You. That was, of course, uh, the newly elected executive mayor of the city of Cape Town. Um, who's just given us some insights into um, all of the preparations that were made to make sure that this morning session runs smoothly.
do stay tuned. I am now joined by the Honourable Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, and that day, Amos Masondo, um, who was also part of the officiating process, uh, the handover that was done this morning of the city of Cape Town Hall um, to Parliament's, into Parliament's possession. And as we know, now that the handover has been done, this building is now officially called the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa Precinct. Um, the deputy chair, I mean the chairperson of the NCOP will quickly talk to us about um, what is the symbolism and the significance, um, especially after what we've witnessed, the fire that gutted various parts of the parliamentary precinct and to now have this historic um, venue available to do, to continue the work of parliament. What are your views on that, Honorable Chairperson? Let me start by acknowledging that uh, the devastating fire uh, has indeed been um, a blow um, and, 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 and a concern uh, by, 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 by and to all uh, South Africans. Um, the significance of, 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 of uh, this place, City Hall, being used for, for solar, uh, is not the fact that um, uh, it is, it's a demonstration of greater collaboration between Parliament uh, on one hand and, and, and the city uh, of Cape Town as well as the, the, the Western Cape uh, Provincial uh, uh, Legislature and Government. Uh, so at, at a time uh, when we're faced with difficulty, uh, there's, there's a greater sense of of collaboration and working together uh, so that indeed uh, uh, we emerge uh, triumphant, uh, we emerge uh, with a sense of hope and a sense of moving uh, forward. Indeed. And when we're talking about uh, the symbolism of the building, that's one aspect um, of the entire process. But of course, there's also a concern about uh, continuity of the work of Parliament. And there's also a very strong view that the work of Parliament will obviously still continue because that work obviously is carried out by the men and the women who have been elected um, to into those positions. And of course, if we also reflect on how the NCOP in particular has made use of um, uh, uh, virtual platforms to conduct this work, talk to our, um, our viewers just a little bit about continuity, work of continuity, and obviously um, recording more progress for our democratic project. Parliament is, is not mere brick and, and mortar. Uh, parliament as an institution uh, is also constituted of various uh, members of parliament as, as well as men and women uh, who work uh, uh, in, 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 in parliament. Uh, the spirit of parliament uh, resides uh, with the people. Uh, so one can, can, can safely say that uh, whilst we've had a problem of the fire in parliament, uh, but the institution is there, continues to operate, and will continue to do, to, to, to do work. Uh, the parliament will continue to hold uh, the executive accountable. It will continue to deliberate uh, on matters very close to people's hearts, uh, uh, issues of, the, of, of, of always seeking to, to improve the quality of life of all citizens. Uh, that's what we'll be pre preoccupied with as we move into the future. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for your time. That was the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, Ntate Amos Masondo, who was just talking to us not only about, um, you know, the launch of this morning, uh, the handover of this morning of the, the building, the City Hall, which was handed over to Parliament's presiding officers, but also the fact that the work um, of the institution, which is of course carried out uh, by the men and the women who have been elected into those positions, that oversight work will still continue. And um, members of the public can continue, they can still expect to see Parliament playing its uh, constitutional role and holding the executive accountable and ensuring that, um, you know, that there is transformation and change in the lives of ordinary South Africans. I am now, of course, joined by the Honorable um, Speaker of the National Assembly, um, who 
who uh, took the lead, who as a woman amongst the men, I took note of that, you know, uh, and of course women out there are always excited when they see a woman taking the lead and a woman being amongst the men representing not only gender issues but generally as a leader in your own right. Madam Speaker, um, the, one of the key questions, issues that have come up, um, obviously in the wake of the fire, is um, of course business continuity. Business continuity and, and the fact that people are worried, um, they want to know, obviously Parliament has I've already posed this question to the, to the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, but I would like to hear your perspectives and your views as well about just assuring the members of the public about business continuity that Parliament over and above the symbolism and the historic meaning of the National Assembly, um, the work of Parliament will still continue. Yes, it is true that the work continues. Not will continue, it continues. It has it's nothing stopped. Um, sitting here as the executive authority of parliament, we've appeared before the joint standing committee on financial financings of parliament thrice already to account for what has happened. So what that means is that the committees take their responsibilities very seriously. Parliament itself continues, therefore, to conduct its oversight, even on the executive of Parliament itself. In fact, the last meeting, we appeared as the executive authority of Parliament, public works minister and deputy minister, and their officials, the minister of police, together with the generals, appeared, and all three entities had to account about what it is that we are doing to make sure that con Parliament continues to do its work. So I, when we say the business of Parliament should continue, we actually mean it because we've actually seen members of Parliament in action actually calling on us as the executive authority to account for what has happened to Parliament and so to give them regular briefings about what is, happ is happening and that will, what will continue to do in Parliament. Not only that, we have also held a programming committee meetings. The whips, chief whips of the various parties have been meeting again to receive reports from the executive authority of Parliament as to how best we are solving the situation. It's a crisis, but every crisis presents an opportunity, and I believe that this crisis has presented an opportunity for South Africans to hold hands and move forward together. Because here, you have the city of Cape Town, right? And you know that the city of Cape Town is run by the Democratic Alliance, and the National Assembly uh, Executive Authority is run by members who are deployed by the African National Congress. But you see us working closely together because this disaster, this crisis has presented an opportunity for us to demonstrate our patriotism as South Africans, that we are South Africans, we are Democrats. We may come from different political parties, but when chips are down, we hold hands and move together as a team of South Africans. And I think it's something which I will forever uh, take to the grave with. I, I will forever be proud of this crisis, the opportunity presented by the crisis of collaboration, of working together, of, of just engaging with one another, advising one another, seeking counsel from one another about how best to deliver the State of the Nation address, but also how do we ensure that Parliament continues to work. The other day, two weeks ago, I actually was invited by the Premier of the province and the Mayor to, to go and, and see the firefighters. And that was an opportunity for us as Parliament to express a word of gratitude to those men and women who worked so hard. So I think that it's a South Africans, South Africans have resilience, they are tenacious, and when a challenge crops up, 
we see a challenge, we don't see a problem. So, and that's how we're dealing with this. Madam Speaker, just talking, coming back to the issue of um, the State of the Nation Address, of course, this platform now, with the precinct being uh, located here, um, it is an opportunity, of course, for the State President to come and deliver his um, annual State of the Nation Address and to announce government's program of action. That in itself um, it's, is a comfort to a lot of South Africans because what they would want to know is what are the plans, especially given the current economic climate. Just in conclusion, I know that the, these are some of the things that uh, will be addressed at the preparatory, uh, at the state of readiness meeting, but just at, uh, are things moving at an at advanced stage now that the shift has been made from um, our, the, the, the normal seat of parliament to where we are right now, to the new uh, uh, parliamentary precinct? Um, are things at, at, at preparations at an advanced stage for the State of the Nation address? Advanced stage, we'll be coming you to, we'll have a media briefing to give you the detail, but I can assure you from now onwards, Jerasi Tlabane, who is standing there, who is, who is head of the protection services of the South African Police Service, from now onwards, will deploy the police to look after this parliamentary precinct. So we're not calling it the city hall anymore. From now onwards, we're calling it parliament, and therefore there will be visibility of police, as is always the case in uh, our precinct in, national, in, 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 in parliament. Madam Speaker, thank you so much for making the time to be with us this morning. And I, I'm sure that our views at home feel very much encouraged and comforted that everything is moving in the right direction. I think people should uh, have confidence in our abilities to move forward, to continue to drive the program of the country. As you said, the President will present his program, will outline the program of the executive, which really talks to advancing and bettering the lives of South African people. And that's what should give people hope, that everything continues its business as usual. Indeed, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for the time spent. That was, of course, uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Meno Sivu Mapisa Nakula, who just also gave us some insights in terms of business continuity um, at Parliament. Um, and, of course, what does this transition mean? Um, for Parliament, she's also indicated that the police have already immediately been deployed. Now that this is now the seat of Parliament, declared the seat of Parliament, based on Section 2 of the Powers and Privileges Act, this is the space now that that is designated, it is declared officially um, the precinct of Parliament, the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. And we would have seen earlier as well, um, the handover was done with, to, and obviously officiated together with uh, the mayor, the executive mayor of the city of Cape Town, um, the speaker of the National Assembly and the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. There will be a meeting or a briefing session that will be taking place a little bit later, which will be communicated by Parliament by Parliament to ensure that members of the media and the public are updated about the state of readiness to convene the 2022 State of the Nation Address. Viewers at home, that is all we have time for this morning. Um, thank you for being with us.